Hello everyone and welcome, this is Federico. Today I'll be talking to, well, starting a new series on uh, on looking at what's going on under the hood of Python uh, in an attempt to to kind of go over what's actually going on to, um, you know, improve our understanding of and, and hopefully write better code, um, write more efficient code, write more elegant Python code. Um, now, if you do enjoy this uh, series, I encourage you to share it and and, and whatnot. And uh, and in the comment section, I would really appreciate it if you could write your own um, little uh, kind of unknown um, Python tricks and mysteries, and uh, so we can all learn from from each other. Um, okay. Now, I would also like to preface this that what I'm about to do is uh, might be seen in might be might fall under the realm of micro optimizations. Now, if you don't know what a micro optimization is, it's uh, looking at uh, kind of the bytecode of what's being generated and trying to optimize it like that. And in Python, micro optimizations, especially in Python and languages which are not meant for performance, um, it's considered kind of a bad idea. It, it's pointless because uh, you, can opt like you can shave off milliseconds by looking at the bytecode but then what you should do instead is just use a language which is meant for performance like C, C++. Um, now, this is not the intent of this video. The intent of this video is to go over what um, Python bytecode is about, how Python works under the hood in an attempt to kind of demystify this, uh, this topic. Awesome. Now that that's out of the way, I have this file, this is assemble.py. Uh, and all that this assemble.py is, it defines this context manager, which will help in looking at timings and, uh, and then import some modules. Okay. Now, what I want to do is, is, is uh, define this function relu. Now, relu, if you don't know, it's a, it's a function used a lot in machine learning. And uh, the way relu is defined is uh, we return x if uh, x is positive or else we return zero. This is all we're doing. Now, we want to look at the um, bytecode generated for this function, and the way we do it is through this uh, this module at the top, and um, and what we can do is just simply well the, this function from the this module, so um, that's already imported, so we can just do this relu. So this takes a a function pointer and then our function object, I guess, since we're in Python, and then what we can do is uh, we can. Uh, we can run our Python file, and then we get our um, our actual. Oops, um, we get our um, our bytecode. Now, how do we read this? Seventeen here is the line of the. If we just, um, it's the line number of this, um, of this line, and it's showing what actually this line is being disassemb disassembled into, and obviously. Uh, there's not a one-to-one -one mapping. You know, one line can map to multiple bytecode instructions, right? Um, and what we're doing is is just running these instructions. Now, if you want a full uh, um, kind of a lot of detail on uh, there's this web page here, which you can go to and you should go to. I highly recommend it, and, and it really goes in detail of what's going on. Now, for example, this load fast instruction. You know, you can go here. It takes this var num argument. And then it pushes, it says that it pushes a reference to the local covar names var number onto the stack. Now, what does that mean? Um, Python is based on a stack. It's a stack based interpreter. And what you do is on a stack, you push and pop stuff to, to use it. Um, this is quite a common uh, kind of workflow for, uh, for interpreters and, and things of that nature. Now, what this load fast instruction therefore is doing is it's giving this argument zero, which maps to this local variable x, and then it's pushing this onto the stack. And that's all that it's doing. Load const similarly, um, but instead of loading a variable, it's loading a constant. So it's saying, okay, at position one uh, of our kind of constant uh, list of uh, elements, we um, we, which is equivalent to zero, then we push that onto the stack. Now it's loading a constant because the zero here is a constant. Um, and then what it's doing in fact is doing this operation. So you see it pushed X onto the stack, it pushes zero onto the stack, and then it does a compare operation 
uh, which four, which is this uh, greater than, which is exactly this. And then it pushes the result of this compare operation onto the stack and pops the other two. Um, now, this operation is a Boolean, true or false. Then it will go to this instru instruction, pop jump if false. Um, so it will look at the top of the stack. If it's a true, um, if it's true, it won't jump. If it's false, it will jump. So what all it's saying is pop the top of the stack. If it's false, jump to 12. L line 12 is this. What does line 12 do? It loads zero, uh, which is this. So at this point, we're here pretty much. Load zero and then returns it. If it wasn't true, it would just continue. It will do load fast uh, X and then return it. So all we're doing is saying, okay, we do this comparison, we check is x bigger than zero right here. Then if it is true, uh, we just return x. So we load fast x into the top of the stack and then we, we return it. If it's false, we will do this one. So we just return zero. This is all that's happening. It's literally, it's very, very obvious what's happening. And that's the whole point of bytecode. It's very, very small instructions. And if you follow it, you follow exactly what your program is being and this is uh, assembled into, right? And then the interpreter will actually look at these instructions and then we'll say, okay, we need this machine code to do this, right? So these are kind of like the 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 Python bytecode is like a higher level version of assembly code. Um, okay, now let's say we are, um, we are a little bit, we, we want to be a bit clever and we want to look, we want to look at a branchless version of it. Um, now, the idea is that in, uh, in languages, uh, which are more lower level, this actually does make sense in some cases. Um, in Python, this does not make sense. So I just want to make that clear. Do not use Python with these <laughs> micro optimizations. Python is not meant to be um, efficient. <laughs> well, I mean, to a certain extent, but these micro optimizations kind of defeat the purpose of Python. But what we could do instead, uh, with a disclaimer um, is simply this. So what does this do? It's equivalent, in, but what we want to do is get rid of this jump. Jumps in, uh, are, are quite inefficient because um, pr CPUs, uh, what they do is they, pre they, they predict code which will be run next and then they, they load that in, right? But with jumps, you don't know which part to kind of load in because the jump could, I mean, this is a quite a small function, so it doesn't really matter. But like, if you have like a, a complicated jump, then it will, it will need to load too many instructions, so it won't, right? And it kind of has to predict wh where the jump will go to. Um, so the idea is that, well, we can avoid that by just not using jumps. So instead of using this uh, uh, jump, which is just an if condition, right? I mean, maybe we could write this more, uh, more obviously if uh, just by this, right? we return x, else uh, we return uh, 0, right? I mean, that's all that it is. Just This is just a more compact and slightly, slightly more efficient. We might go into it uh, why it's slightly more efficient. But again, to look at why it, these ternary operators are slightly ever so slightly more efficient, you can just literally look at the bytecode. Again, bytecode gives you an idea of what is actually happening. Um, okay, so this jumpless instruction um, or branchless instruction. Um, pretty much all it does is, is it's a bit clever because uh, um, what it's doing is if x is bigger than zero, then this is equal to a one, right? And then what we're doing is is one one times x. So we're just returning x. So maybe let me write this like this. So if x equals zero is is true, then this becomes this. So we're returning x. If x equals zero is false, then what we're doing is zero times x, so we return zero. So it's doing exactly what this is doing, just without using a jump. So I mean, no jumps. This should be faster. So let's try it. Let's uh, let's just um, print a space and then dis disassemble this one just to analyze what's going on. And then what we want to do is. Um, Let's let's look at um, some. Let, let's time it. This is why I have this time it context manager. So we can just uh, time it. Let's do from e to the minus seven um, to not make it run too long because my uh, CPU is like 
really my fans are gonna get really loud oops um and then this is 10. i'm casting it to an it because uh arrange uh, what i'm about to do I, I have to so we time it uh so here we can pass in uh red loop um and then for and in range uh low range high range uh one i guess um we do red loop and so all we're doing is trying to um to time this and then s similarly uh red loop uh, branchless um oops, red loop branchless oops there we go okay so if we run this um we can just let it run for a little bit um but anyway here we can see the different the that they're producing different um, bytecode and uh, first thing we can notice is that this looks shorter <laughs> this actually looks shorter so we might think okay well it, it's producing less bytecode has to run less instructions so this must be more efficient well this is not true because um all, all instructions are not equal especially in, in this higher level bytecode um it's just um you just cannot compare instructions by by how many there are right um now what's making this slower is actually this uh, binary multiply uh, at least i believe <laughs> um you might correct me if i'm wrong but binary multiplication so before what this is doing is just simply doing jumps and then it's just accessing references to the variables which is not so expensive especially in higher level languages i mean these instructions are just not very expensive as you can see uh on this uh range it takes like three more seconds to to run my to run the example so again these are micro optimizations but it's just to look at um at what's actually happening uh let's look at it so in both cases they're first loading uh i mean these instructions are pretty much the same uh, actually the same exact order the only difference is that this one has a jump which jumps to 12 this is what these uh, kind of uh, two indent signs mean uh this is a jump target so this is the only difference this part here and the difference is that this binary multiply is actually more expensive than the jump and this is what's why this uh thing which seems more clever is actually more expensive and you know with this logic you can kind of um you can investigate a lot of things. So, for example, uh, what if we did max, right? Uh, let's see what that. Uh, so we do we return the max of zero and x, and then if we time it, maybe here let's put it at six. So it's a bit uh, um, less lengthy. Uh, oops, let me just do like this. Um, and then let's copy this and let's. Relu max and then relu max and then if we run this again this way the the goal is to look at um um what's going on here with this max function you might assume okay this max implementation is quite quite fast quite speedy but it turns out it takes twice as long as the other two implementations why well Again, this is a very small, like even smaller, but this call function uh, instruction is quite expensive. You know, you have to set up everything on the stack and so on. So, so the main idea is that you should use this assembly because how would you, I mean, you could maybe infer it from this code, like, okay, well, I'm calling a function outside, but really you should be looking at the disassembly to to look at what Python code is generating. And this might not be so useful for Python uh, per se, but if you're, but it really maps well to, to understand what the interpreter is doing. And, um, and that's very important because if you understand what the interpreter is doing, then you will actually understand like, okay, why are these things slightly better? Why, why is this a better practice? Why do you need to reference uh, variables locally? Why is that more efficient? Well, it's because of how Python is working behind, under the hood. And uh, yeah, so the main takeaway here is you can use this assembly Python module and now you should actually be able to um, to read this to, to understand what's going on. So again, this is the line number in the file. This is 
the byte uh, position in the bytecode. So they go in sets of two bytes each. And then this is the actual instruction. This is the argument. And then this is like a helper um, to tell you what this argument means, right? Um, if you want to learn, for example, what this uh, pop jump if false is, pop jump, you just search it in this uh, document here. Uh, if the top of the stack is false, sets the bytecode counter to target, to, uh, top of the stack is popped. It's literally saying exactly what it does. You can follow it and then figure out what your function is doing. I really recommend you play around with it. Let me know what you thought of it. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Uh,